Hey everyone, thanks for coming back to the channel. It's that time of year again, right before uh, summer sets in. So uh, getting ready to put the boat back in the water and we're gonna do an oil change. So this is how I've been doing it for a few years and I'll show you what the tools are that you need. If you're not comfortable with it, uh, take it to the dealer. We always like to support our dealers, but you know, some of you are a few hours away and just like to do stuff yourself like me. Anyway, uh, here we go. Okay, so this is a 2018 Centurion FI-21 and it's got the 409 engine in it. Uh, pretty standard engine on a lot of the boats. Um, if you don't have much patience and you're not really very familiar with working on boats, I probably don't recommend doing this. It's kind of a pain, just like everything else now that they're all deeper and harder to get to. But let's get on with it since you're here. So there's a tube that normally is tied up right up along in here somewhere. It's It's got this tip on it right here. And this one used to have a little clip on the end, but the clip broke or got lost or didn't work. So I put a piece of hanger on there. But anyway, look for uh, the rubber hose with this tip on it and it's gonna be clipped on a loop somewhere, probably to that one there. Sometimes they'll hook them up back here, but you'll see the hose down there looks like that. I've already actually got it down there and hooked up, but um, so watch the whole video before you do this. When I get done draining, I'll show you what it looks like. I just, it was kind of an afterthought doing the video since I do videos anyway. But basically we're running that hose down off the bottom of the drain pan or the uh, oil pan out through the hole in the back. There you can kind of see it. Um, it's got a little brass connector and I put an air hose um, coupler, the male end, on there you can kind of see it right there so it threads right on and then on the outside i'll show you what it looks like just another piece of uh, uh, fuel hose also since i've already kind of got this whole thing started i'm gonna let you know you got to run the boat well you don't have to but if you can run the boat get it warm it'll make it go a lot faster and you kind of need to do this if you're going to use the pump the way that I do on this. So I ran the boat out in the uh, garage using the uh, plunger method. I'll show you the plunger. Some people call these a fake a lake, but basically it goes onto the intake underneath your boat and then you just turn the water on full blast. Make sure it's got a good seal. And I've been doing this for at least 15 years on various boats, Malibus and Centurion. So in addition to your fuel line, which I'll show you here in a second. You're going to need an air hose coupler like this. And right off the top of my head, I can't remember what the threading is. It's probably a quarter inch. So you either have one laying around um, your garage or your shop, or you go to the hardware store and get one. And then also at the hardware store or automotive parts store, here's a... Um, Here's the hose, let's see if I can. Uh, this one's from Napa. I'm trying to see the mark. So it's basically just a fuel line hose. So you need about three or four feet of that as well to clip onto the male end of that air hose. So then this little um, fluid pump, I got this on Amazon. I've had a couple of them. They don't last forever, so they're pretty cheap, but you just hook this on to this fluid pump and then I've got it's a 12 volt and then I've got this you know old battery charger booster that I hook up to these leads and then run the pump and then the oil goes into the catch basin here so I'll show you that here in a second I do recommend using hose clamps because if these things pop off you're gonna have oil everywhere so definitely use hose clamps on every fitting uh, or connection where the hose goes on. So I'll hook up 
these um, leads as uh, appropriately and we'll get the pump running. Okay, so on my last boat was a Malibu, a 2012 VLX. The hose from the engine was long enough to where it would come out that hole back there and you didn't have the, the uh, exhaust, the underwater exhaust on that boat. It was older and so the tube would just run straight down to the back. This one's got a little bit of stuff in the way so the pump works better in this case. You can pull the boat in uh, if you don't have anything in the way there and just let it drain overnight but definitely warm it up beforehand that'll speed things up so let's turn on the pump. And my battery charger of course the kid ran it down and it barely puts out enough voltage and I guess I'm gonna have to get something else. Okay so this kind of sucks. Whoever used my charger last left it dead and now it doesn't work. So anyway this pump is 5 amps. That battery charger is 8 amps. <laughs> I don't recommend using a battery charger um, for many reasons but that's kind of what I'm left with so let's try it. Alright that's what I'm talking about. Oh boy yeah that thing's in the boost mode. Hopefully it works. But anyway, you can see this pump is sucking the oil out really fast. Probably faster than it should. It might overheat, but it's gonna be fast. Uh, typically what I end up putting in is about four and a half quarts. I think that the specs call for like five quarts, but there's usually like a half a quart hidden in there, you know, due to the level of the boat or whatever. Um, this, the oil filter on these boats probably holds a quarter or a half quart, something like that. I don't know. Another thing to look out for is I have had the oil filter on one of these things blow a seal when you start it up. Uh, there's going to be a lot of opinions on this. Um, hang on. Wow, so as you can see, that was pretty damn fast. There's other pumps you can do by hand. You can suck it out through the dipstick, which I don't like doing that. It's a pain. Sometimes the line gets stuck inside the dipstick hole. But as you can see, this thing ripped the oil out of it really fast. Okay, so I'm just going to let the uh, lines drain down into the tub here and uh, we'll go on inside the boat. So this is the oil that I was recommended to use when I bought the boat in 2018, the Shell Rotella T4 1540. It's hard to find these days sometimes because of the Ukraine and Russia thing going on, but you can get it. Look at a Shell station. If you can't find it at Walmart or another big box store, check Napa um, or the Shell gas station. That's where I ended up finding it. You know, and who, who buys their oil at the gas station? Not me. Anyway, uh, you should get a garbage can like this. That's how we're gonna change the filter. So you're gonna have rags in here and you're gonna put your oil filter in there. I'm gonna grab a bag though and that way it'll keep you from getting oil on your Okay, bag. so we've got rubber gloves, bag, roll of blue towels. And that's gonna help us facilitate changing the uh, oil filter. Um, like I said, I've had one below the seal off once and it was a frigging disaster. So, you know, if that kind of stuff scares you, you might want to take it to the dealer. But that, that was one time out of 20 years of changing filters on boats, cars, everything that had happened. And I don't know why it happened, but it might've been a defective filter. Hey, if you guys would, please subscribe to the channel. I've got a video on doing the impeller on these motors. I've got a few videos on doing some mods and basically a lot of videos on these boats. So anyway, please subscribe. It helps the channel. I don't have a thousand subscribers yet. And also follow the links down below in the description for like, say, the pump and all that stuff that helps support my channel. Anyway, what we're going to do right now is pull that that fuel or the oil drain hose up that's still connected to the fuel hose that I had from Napa and we're gonna remove that and secure it. 
Okay, so here's another tip. Put lots of towels down. You don't want to destroy the vinyl in your $100,000 boat or whatever your boat costs. Um, wear gloves, that way you can take them off and change them in between jobs. Like I'm gonna pull these gloves off after I secure the hose and I'll be clean inside the boat, put new gloves on for the filter change. So those are some tips. Trust me, I've learned the hard way and I'm gonna save you some headache that way. So anyway, here's uh, the top of the oil drain hose, the yellow part there. And then the air chuck or the uh, male air connector there onto my fuel hose from Napa. So that's what it looks like when it's out of here. And it's, it's really tough to get down at the bottom of these boats. So if you have bad shoulders, bad back, neck, whatever, take it to the dealer, it's worth it. All right, so that is what the uh, coupler looks like for the air hose. And then here's what the tip of that looks like without the coupler on it. And then our cap is right there. So I'm gonna put that back on there and I'll show you where I stow it. Oh, good Lord. Okay, make sure you have one of these on the boat, these little magnets, because you're gonna drop something down there. And I just dropped the uh, clip underneath the engine. <laughs> I was trying to route that hose back up. So another little tidbit to save so your sanity. So that's where I hook up the drain tube. And now we're gonna move on to the uh, filter. Okay, so there's the filter and we're going to slightly break it loose by hand. I'm assuming that somebody didn't wrench it down. You should never use a wrench to, you know, a filter wrench to tighten these things. You should just do it by, by feel because um, sometimes they'll get stuck on there and then you got a giant mess. Anyway, so I'm gonna break it loose just a little bit. I'm gonna have some paper towels underneath to catch drips if it starts dripping. And then when I pull it off, I'm gonna pull it off while it's inside this bag. And then I'm gonna transfer it over these towels and into this garbage can, which will protect us. Okay, so I broke it loose just a little bit and I'm gonna put the bag around it and pull it the rest of the way off. So you see I've got the bag all the way around the filter. There's a paper towel, some paper towels in the bottom of the bag. And I'm just gonna grab around the outside of the bag and loosen the filter the rest of the way, and transfer it into the garbage can. All right, she is out and you can see it's dripping a little bit of oil straight down on the rag. So I'm gonna quickly put this into the garbage can here. That one's secured and we're gonna mop up that so the specs on this engine, the 409, uh, the 2018 at least, called for a Motocraft FL1A. You can get a different brand if you want, but it's got to be an FL1A. And um, that's what I've been using for years and it's worked real well. So we're going to put that on there. Hey, so here's a tip. Uh, put a little bit of oil on the uh, gasket here and, and the threads. Also on your old filter, take a look at it and make sure that it's got the gasket there because if that gasket for whatever reason is stuck on the housing you're going to have a blowout for sure. okay so i've i've got it on there just hand tight and i'm going to let you look at the instructions on the actual box here so it it tells you to go ahead and lube the gasket tighten it hand tight and then turn it three quarters of a turn that's right on the instructions Okay, don't use an oil filter wrench on these filters or you're going to screw yourself. If you squish that, well, first of all, the next time you go to change your oil, you may not be able to get it off without a wrench, filter wrench. Alternatively, if you smash that gasket on there, you might cause it to deform and pop out of its groove, and that might be a cause of a blowout. All right, so I actually only got about a half a turn on that thing hand tight wearing the rubber gloves and it was I couldn't tighten any tighter So I'm just gonna leave it like that. That's what I did last time after the blowout. So it's generally they're not gonna come off You know when they heat up they um, They get a little bit tighter as well, but Also what you can do is after we run the boat you can double check it again make sure it's still tight and then when you get on the water Check it again real quick, make sure it's not loosening up. So 
So I like to do a little mental checklist before I add oil. Uh, number one is, you know, obviously I've already drained the oil, but I've got the cap back on that drain tube on the other side of the boat. It's secured, done that. I've got the filter, the new filter on. It's been secured up to, you know, the, the way that I like to tighten them up. So we've got both of the sources of oil leakage done and we know the oil is gone so we're ready to put oil in it and just a note some of the specs do change over the years so you might run into a case where your manual says to put a certain kind of oil in in, in the boat and you should just do that don't ask me what is recommended right now in your boat because there's a lot of different theories on whether you should use um, synthetic, half synthetic, or you know what I'm using right now. So go with whatever the manufacturer specs say and stick to that and just do it every year that way. Call your dealer if you're not sure, you know? Um, I, I do like supporting the dealers and I don't do everything myself, so take it into the dealer if this isn't for you. But I'm gonna throw gallon in there that's four quarts and then we're going to go with about another half a quart i'm going to run it and then we're going to top it off you guys that are familiar with my channel you know i jump around a lot and i apologize for that but uh, i pretty much do this as i go it's not scripted or anything just do yourself a favor make sure you got regs all around you know anticipate spilling stuff because you're going to spill stuff and these nice machines you don't want to mess it all up all right so there's my gallon in it i'm going to go get some more and dump it in there and hopefully it'll stop raining out there and pull the boat back out and run it and hopefully the oil filter does not explode i put in the uh additional three quarters of a quart so i put in a total of four and three quarters in the engine and I like to leave it down just below five because I can't tell you how many times I've seen these things overfilled. Uh, but the specs on it say, I believe, five quarts. So anyway, let's check the oil on the dipstick here. I gotta put the phone down to do this. Okay, so let's see if we can get this thing to focus. Now, if you look at the dipstick right now, and I don't know if you can really make it out, it's kind of blurry, but it shows that it's overfilled by about a half a quart roughly and that is because we haven't started it yet and the oil filter has not been filled so once we start that it's going to go down and it should be right about at the full mark all right so we're done all we have to do is run the boat and check the level again please make sure that you recycle your oil and dispose the uh, filter properly <laughs> that's my green speech for right now and i'm not really that green but anyway um, oh yeah, and the next thing I'm going to do, which is going to be a separate video, is show how to change the uh, transmission oil. And with this one, we're going to suck it out of that tube, that's the only way we can get it out. But please subscribe, use the links for the pump and all that stuff, and uh, happy to have you watch more of my videos. Thanks for watching. So I just wanted to add this at the end of the video on the oil change. I went ahead and wrapped a towel around the uh, oil filter here and had this door closed so that oil wouldn't come out if the thing blew. And uh, so far we're good. But um, like I said, once in my entire life has this happened and it wasn't due to a double gasket it wasn't due to any kind of flaw that I could see. The only thing I can figure out is that because I pre-filled the filter, maybe there was too much pressure initially, or perhaps it was over-tightened and it deformed the gasket. So, but right now we're good. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe.